Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, awesome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and continuing your painting process. In today's painting, this is going to be a Georgia O'Keeffe painting and a bit more of, um, I guess we would call an advanced beginner because we're gonna go uh, work on more wet on wet blending and work in smaller sections and move our way across the canvas. So if you are a first time painter, I would recommend that you try some of my other videos geared towards first time painters, get comfortable with the process, and then when you're a little more comfortable with holding the brush and mixing your paint, then try this video, because um, it might be a little too much for this being your first painting. Um, so with that being said, this is gonna be diving into more of the wet on wet blending and more brush control uh, for these George O'Keefe paintings. So what you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is all the paint, brushes, canvas, everything that you need to get started painting um, for this project. What you're also gonna see in the description box below is a link to what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a way to get that initial composition on your canvas before you start painting. Um, and you would transfer it using carbon paper or graphite paper. You also have the option that you can pause um, the video where that traceable image shows up and draw what you see on your canvas. So there's information in the description box below, whichever method works for you, make that happen and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Uh, with this video and any video that I create, you have full permission to deviate from the instruction. If you wanna change out colors, if you wanna do something different, it's just important that you actually paint. All right, and no matter what you do today, just have fun, get lost in the process of painting and just kind of forget about the world for a little bit. So enough talking, let's jump into the painting process. All right, guys, this is going to be a fun George O'Keefe painting. So head on over to where you have your setup and turn on your favorite music. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. All right, so this George O'Keefe painting is going to be a lot of fun and we're going to get a lot of practice with our wet on wet blending. So we're going to take this section by section and we're going to start with kind of a medium blue. So we're going to pull some of that white aside, add it some blue and we're going for a medium shade of blue. And then we'll be putting other colors, um, darker and lighter colors on top of that. Now it's usually easier to start with kind of uh, just a touch of your pigment to add to the white. You can always add more. And we're gonna start on the left-hand side in this little section right underneath the iris and above the bottom iris. And we're gonna fill this in with this uh, light to medium blue. And then we're gonna put our colors on top of this and blend it in while the paint is wet. So now we're doing some wet on wet blending. So you can see that I slapped some white on my light blue. And then using light pressure with the brush, I'm just going over it, making little X marks and kind of blending it into that base color. Now, those of you that are painting at home, I want you to just observe the place where I put that white paint and kind of the shape that I made when I mixed it into it. If you end up mixing your paint too much, just reapply your white paint and mix, but move your brush less times. If you need to go back and make that light blue again, you can. And we're gonna make it a little bit lighter blue than what we just used and go up into that top left-hand corner. And we're gonna be working our way around the iris, um, doing the background first, and then we'll come in for the flowers. So that top right-hand corner as well, fill in with your light blue. And that light blue was lighter than that first blue section that we used. And if you have to mix your color a second or third time, which like I said, you'll be doing a lot um, in this painting, be kind to yourself because your brain is taking in a lot of information each time you mix your colors. Um, and in the beginning stages, because your brain's taking all that information in, it can be a little overwhelming. So just know that every time you paint, every time you mix your colors, your brain is taking in more information and holding on to that information for the next time that you paint. 
All right, so here we're gonna be grabbing that direct blue. We're gonna slap our darker color on there. And just like the white, we're putting that dark blue in a few places. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off and we're gonna blend this dark blue into the light blue. So with light pressure, I'm just kind of pulling that blue into the light blue. Um, and I'm kind of going towards the right because I don't want this darker blue going into the stem. And again, you can see that as you move your brush, um, it kind of blends the background color and the new color that you introduced. If you feel like finger painting for doing this, go right ahead. But again, this video, the George O'Keefe series, is geared towards kind of stepping up some of those beginner skills and getting more brush control and better at your blending. And this is a painting that you could do multiple times. Maybe try a few different blending methods and find what works for you. Cause that's really what creativity is about. You're finding what works for you, not about um, creating a picture perfect painting. Um, you're just here escaping the world. So we're doing the same thing with the white and I'm gonna go back over that original spot. Um, and the same thing, light pressure, uh, blend that new color into your background and if you need to you can wipe off any excess paint on the paper towel and you'll see that I do that um, quite often uh, especially before I go to blend the light colors and if you are noticing that you've got a lot of buildup on your paint uh, bleh, if you've got a lot of buildup on your brush of paint uh, feel free to wipe it off and that will kind of bring your bristles back together all right, you're doing a good job. Um, if you are holding your breath, please take a big inhale and relax. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna be moving into yellow and white paint and we're going for about a one-to-one -one, uh, mixture of your yellow and white. And we're gonna be putting this on the top iris um, on the bottom and then on the bottom iris in the center. All right, so here you can see that I'm just applying it to um, that middle shape on the top iris and we're kind of filling that in and again, we'll be applying some other colors on top of this. So now we're going down to the bottom iris in that little kind of half moon shape, filling that in. And then we're gonna drag some colors up. All right, so now we're gonna grab white so we can do a little bit of blending. And I apologize, it's super exciting to put white on a white canvas. So for that white, just observe where you see me placing it. I'm going around the yellow on the bottom iris and probably, let's see, probably about two inches, two to three inches above that yellow spot in the center, I'm adding the white and we're gonna be blending our blue into this. So again, I apologize, super exciting white on a white canvas. All right, and then doing the same thing on that top iris, just putting some white in the rest of that area and blending that light yellow mixture into the white and just kind of softening it. And if you need to mix that yellow, we're gonna go back to that yellow and white mixture with a little heavier handed on the yellow, so probably a two to one mixture. And you can see where I'm placing the yellow right on top of the light yellow from a moment ago. And this is just giving an intensity of saturation as we add this yellow. So feel free to pause the video and just observe the small placement of where this color went and mimic that on your canvas to the best of your. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna go back to making our light blue and that was white with a touch of blue into it. And we are hanging down on our the iris on the bottom and we're gonna go petal by petal and we're gonna put the light blue on, then we're gonna um, put a little bit darker blue and then we'll put some white. So again, just going petal by petal. I think I do two petals here. And then we are, the reason that we put that barrier of white um, above the yellow, we're gonna be blending this light blue into that white. So if you need to go grab a clean brush and then just slightly wet, you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just kind of smearing the white 
and that light blue together. And this is just a different way to do your wet on wet blending. And by, like I said earlier, having that white on there, um, it makes it easier to blend the blue into the white compared to trying to bring that blue all the way up to the yellow and not make green. So that white is a nice barrier between our color mixture. All right, so moving right along, going back to that light blue and moving down to the next petal. And we'll do the same thing. We're gonna put that light blue on and then you can blend that into that white paint. So you do wanna do this while both your white paint and the new light blue paint that you're adding is both wet. All right, and still moving right along into the next petal, um, adding that light blue. And again, just smearing it into that white. And if you are using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker. It'll help with your blending. And you may have to adjust uh, based on the brand of paint that you're using. You may have to paint a little faster. You may have to paint a little bit slower, but adjust to what you need. All right, so now we're adding more blue to that light blue mixture. So we're at a medium blue. And just like in the background, I'm placing these um, kind of random weird shapes on the petals. And then I'll go back and I'll wipe the brush off and then blend that together with light pressure. Again, this video is just getting you comfortable with the process of wet on wet blending and the process of smaller and more controlled brush strokes. So as you're learning, you wanna constantly keep refining your skills. All right, and again, like I said, just using that light pressure, almost little dots or dash marks that I'm making, but blending that medium blue into the light blue. And again, as you're looking at the video, you can see where I left a little bit of a haze in between each of the petals. Um, again, just observe what you see, um, the spaces that I'm making, and you are strengthening your power of observation by doing this. And that's really what a lot of art is about. And art is not about being perfect, but it's about learning to look at your world from a slightly new perspective and look, about, look at the things that you care about from a new manner. So as we're looking at this flower, we're looking at our value scale. We're adding um, what was it, what we called our mid-tone, which was our main color. And then when we put the darker blue on there, that's our shadow. And then when we put the white or the lighter colors on there, that is our highlight. And as a painter, this is how you become a magician. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. All right, so here you can see that I'm going back with that direct blue, that straight blue, one more darker shade, and same thing, just placing it where I want it, and then I'm gonna go back and kind of blend that into the base color. So even here on this petal that you're looking at, you can see the super white at the bottom, the light blue, the medium blue, and the darker blue. And the more that you paint, the more this type of blending and the more control that you will have over your brush. So again, be kind to yourself, take a deep breath. Hopefully you are so focused on your canvas right now that you forget about the rest of the world. And that's another beautiful aspect about the painting process. Um, but either way, be kind to yourself. We have enough craziness going on in the world. You don't need to add to it in your head. I'm proud of you for painting, you're doing great. All right, so again, adding a little bit more of that dark blue in a few places. And like I said, this is the same formula that we're gonna recreate and build upon um, as we complete this entire painting. So again, just good practice. All right, pause the video, take a progress photo. All right, so going back to the light blue. And again, like I said, you're just getting good practice at mixing this. And we're gonna go back to the remaining petals on the bottom. And again, just going petal by petal, recreating the same formula that we worked on earlier. When we get to the top iris, we'll actually be introducing a little bit of black into our uh, wet on wet blending. 
All right, so again, just fill in that space in, um, petal by petal. You're doing great. If you are on a stretched canvas, um, carry that color over the sides, the tops and the bottom. I'm on a panel, so I forgot to mention that earlier. And since you're using the same shade of blue, it should be pretty easy for you to make it again. And you can go back to the other edges and carry that color around the side. All right, so again, just filling in these bottom, recreating this beautiful Georgia O'Keeffe uh, flower painting that she was so known for. All right, and again, adding the dark blue or the straight blue, slapping it in a few spots, um, wipe your brush off if you need to, and then go back with light pressure and blend um, that new color into your base color. Now, as you're painting at home, if you feel like switching out and maybe doing purple or pink or green or whatever color irises or teal, um, feel free to switch it up. And all you would do is just switch out instead of using blue, you replace it with whatever color you want and you have a new and unique painting. So any of my videos on my channel, feel free to switch out colors. And then definitely, no matter what you do, please send me a picture of what you paint. And you can email those paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. All right, so here we go again. We're gonna grab the white paint, white on a white canvas, super exciting. But I do want something on every space on the canvas. So we're filling in that last petal. And if you do what I just did right there to where I got a little bit of blue into it, take a paper towel, wipe it off, and then reapply your white paint. So with acrylic paint, um, there's really a lot of wiggle room. You can wipe stuff off. You can let it dry and paint over it. Um, but it's a good medium for my beginner painters to start with. All right, and any of the other places, if there happens to be some canvas showing through or you need to do a little bit more blending, um, you can use the straight white. And you'll see that I'm just kind of going over a few of the spaces um, that I left really light on the petals and just kind of filling out and smoothing in and softening the transition. So you do what you need to do to your flower right now, and then we're gonna move on up to that last iris. And if you're doing this and realizing uh, we need a few darker areas, it is okay to go back and intensify your dark areas. So that's what I'm realizing here, that that blue needs to be just a little bit more intense. And because my paint is still wet, it makes it easy to go back and just adjust any of the blending. So for this particular painting, I do recommend that you, you finish it in one sitting. So that way you can do this blending or at least do one flower and then come back the next day and do the second flower. doing a great job and remember as you're painting to get out of your chair look at your painting from five to ten feet away and assess it from that distance and looking at it from that distance is the normal viewing distance for most things in life so when you're in the creative aspect you have to kind of remember the place that other people are going to be observing it from and adjust what you need to by doing that um, so again get out of your chair look at it from a distance you may like it a little bit more from that distance and it is because our eye visually blends stuff together from that distance. But you're doing great. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. I hope you continue it and build creative outlets for your life. Um, this is a nice stress relieving outlet to counter um, the other aspects of your life and try other creative things. Try watercolors, try oils, try sculpture, um, but just have fun. All right, so take your progress photo. We're gonna be moving into the top iris and we're going back to our light blue and we're starting on the base of that flower and just kind of pulling some of that light blue on top of that white paint. Um, and being very careful if your paint is still wet for this to not mix too much of the blue with the yellow because we don't want to create green. All 
All right, so we're going back to grabbing that white. We're gonna put our base on there again, super exciting, white on a white canvas. Um, but we're basically on the top of that iris, filling in the center, and just like the bottom iris, pulling some of that white into each of the petals that we will be blending our light blue into later. All right, so now we're making our light blue. You're getting good practice at making the light blue. And like I said, again, we're just gonna go petal by petal. So we're applying this light blue right above that white um, on a couple of these petals. And then we will be introducing a new dark color for this particular flower. We're gonna introduce some blue and black color combo. All right, so again, that light blue, um, it is a little bit darker than the background, so if you need to adjust your blue so it's a little darker than your background, go right ahead and do that. And again, when we came up next to that white, just using that light pressure and softly blending that white into that light blue. You're doing great. Remember to breathe. George O'Keefe is very proud of you right now for getting creative. I don't know how she feels about people creating her artwork, but either way, I'm sure she's happy that people are just getting creative and escaping the world a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna grab more of that direct blue, same thing. We're putting a darker shade on top of the lighter blue, and then with light pressure, we're gonna blend this into that light blue. And again, you're just strengthening your power of observation to see the places of where I put this, and then mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. All right, so here, if you need to, you can go down, grab a different brush, uh, wipe off a lot of the water, because you want to keep a, you know, kind of a moist brush, and you can go back and do some of the blending. Oh, let's try it again. All right, so now we're going to introduce a new dark color. So we're grabbing the pointy brush, black paint, and you, again, we're just going to be placing this in a few little areas and then blending it into the blue. And keep in mind, a little bit of black goes a long way into your paint mixture. So it is okay if you actually start off and don't add a whole lot of black, do your mixture, and then if you need to go back and add a little bit darker, go right ahead. Um, but when you're adding your darker colors into light colors, start off very sparing, because you can always add more, and it's more difficult and frustrating if you have to backtrack. So as you're beginning your painting skills, I am trying to get you into some good habits as well. All right, and again, that was just a light pressure. If you need to wipe that brush off, light pressure to just blend that black and that dark blue in together. You're doing awesome. You're learning a lot right now. We're almost done. All right, so now we're gonna make a medium blue. We're gonna go back into the rest of those petals and work on our way down the front of this iris. All right, and again, the petals that are a little bit closer will have a little bit higher contrast, so that's why it's a bit of a darker blue as we do this or more of the medium blue compared to the light blue that we used in the beginning. Nice, and again, remember breathe, relax as you're coming up next to those other colors. And if you happen to get anything in there, um, you can wipe it off like you saw with the paper towel earlier, or just mix it into the paint. I am a fan of Bob Ross and he called those happy accidents. So just learn to kind of work them into your painting. All right, so here we're going to the blue and black color combo. And again, I put that medium blue on the petal, on the canvas, and then grab the black, put in a few little 
swipes on there. Again, a small amount of black goes a long way and then blending that into the base color. And again, at home, I can't stress enough, um, and especially for my beginner painters, a little bit of black goes a long way. So if you do find that you added too much black, um, take a paper towel, wipe off any of that excess paint, reapply your initial uh, medium blue, and then try again. You can just kind of re um, uh, reverse the video back to that point and pick it up. But be kind to yourself as you're doing this. Um, it is kind of a nice, simple little balance and you will achieve it. It's just, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but just be proud of yourself. You're painting at home. You're learning something new. There are things that are challenging about painting. There are things that come easy. So enjoy the things that come easy and be willing to work to figure out some of those challenges. Kind of can relate to life too. All right, now we're gonna go into blue, finishing that last petal up front. And I am mixing it into that um, medium blue that I was using earlier, basically just going a little bit darker than the last two petals that we added. So going a, I guess it would be two shades darker than your medium blue. So it's not quite at that direct blue. We'll be using that direct blue and black for a little bit of that blending. And also pretty cool to look at the painting as you go back and look at your progress photos, um, how spaces and how things change and how you look at the painting differently as you get rid of that white canvas space. So go back and uh, study your progress pictures a little bit. All right, so here we're grabbing that black again and a little bit goes a long way, placing it right on top of that medium, medium darkish blue. And again, we're just gonna blend that in and soften that transition. So it's kind of going on the left and right hand side of this petal. Again, wipe that brush off, go back and blend. If you need to wipe off excess paint because it got too dark, uh, same thing, go right ahead. So now we're using the light pressure and we're just putting a few accent lines on our petals and they are really light. They're kind of probably closer to a dark gray rather than a pure black. And we're just accentuating some lines. So just observe where you see me place these. You can add a touch of water to your brush and that will help with the fluidity of your paint. Um, but you never want your brush dripping wet. And as you're doing these, you can treat your brush kind of like a pencil and use just the tip of it. You do want to keep light pressure for these light skinny lines. Maybe practice the pressure of your brush on a scrap sheet of paper before you go into doing it on the canvas. Just a few options. And again, these lines are just giving a hint of structure to our flower. And you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting at home today. I hope you're proud of yourself and I hope you continue with the painting process. So until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice. I have no doubt that George O'Keefe would be proud of you. I'm proud of you for painting at home. And it is okay to do this video more than once. You will strengthen those skills and get more and more comfortable with blending and doing some of those subtle transitions. So thanks again for practicing and continuing to evolve your skills. As you're uploading your videos to social media, please tag me at Paint with Lovejoy um, or hashtag paint with lovejoy or even email them to me. I really like to see your guys's uh, finished results. And then when I post those to social media, it encourages other people to uh, jump in on the painting process as well. So you are a huge, huge help for getting other people to paint and for continuing the success of this channel. So please spread the word. Um, if there's anything you want me to paint in the future, you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in, um, in the, the comments below. And I do my best to respond to just about every comment on there. Like I said, I appreciate your support. 
So thanks again for taking time out of your day to hang out with me, keep on painting, and I will see you for the next painting session. Cheers. Oh,